In this video tech tip, we are going to explore one of the most widely used tools from the Imaginate Utilities for Civil 3D, import from Google. My name is Joe Hedrick, and I am a Solutions Architect with Imaginate. This overview is meant to help you get started utilizing this routine. Let's get started. Import from Google is one of the oldest in the toolkit. However, it remains the most popular. It was developed at a time right after Autodesk did away with the Google Earth integration, and our clients were really asking for you know, a, a way to um, you know, bring that functionality back. So simply, here's our drawing. Uh, it is georeferenced. And also note that there is uh, a twist um, or a rotation that's been applied uh, just simply using the dView twist command. Uh, but the way that the routine works is from the Imagine It toolbar, uh, simply select Import from Google. Uh, we will get a dialog box that, that opens up. And a couple of things about this. Number one, you do not have to have any other software installed on your computer to use this. Right back in the day with, with Google Earth, you used to have to have the Google Earth um, you know, installed and you know, it was a process to go you know, back and forth, find your area that you, that you wanted in Google Earth, you know, get that centered up, then come to Civil 3D, run the routine, and it would bring that information into the drawing file. So we developed this in such a way to where you know, we don't have to use anything else. Uh, and when the window opens, it is automatically centered on the center area of your screen. So what that means is, although you can pan all around uh, in this dialog box, you can search if you have an address that you need to find, right? You can do all of that, but you don't need to. When this opens up, like I tell people, is just don't touch it, other than to zoom in and zoom out. Um, if it opens you know, at, at first and you don't see the little zoom in and zoom out picker, just uh, you know, expand the, the box just a little bit uh, and, and you'll see that. Uh, so simply using the plus and minus, we can you know, zoom in on the, on the area of interest. You know, keep in mind that in this, uh, in, in this view, uh, north is straight up. Um, however, our routine is smart enough that it'll automatically rotate you know, that information for you when it brings it in. We get a couple of options of relating to what we want to import. Uh, we can import just the georeferenced image. We can import just a terrain surface, right? This is, you know, data that comes, you know, from Google. So, you know, usually it's, it's USGS based, uh, you know, information. Uh, or we have an option to essentially do both, bring in the image and the tin surface. Right, that's the option I'm gonna pick just to, uh, to show the complete routine. And we'll hit okay. It's gonna ask us now for a grid size, right? This is, pertains to the uh, surface that it's going to generate. Uh, we default to, you know, 100 by 100. You can see, you know, the amount of points this is gonna bring in. Obviously, the, the more points, uh, the longer it's gonna take. You know, however, there's there's somewhat of a point of diminishing return here, and that you know, consider the source of of the data, uh, you know, especially you know, quad maps, uh, you know, all that stuff was was developed in metric, so you know, it's it's not going to do you any good accuracy wise, you know, to do something say you know like five feet, five feet. It's going to take a whole lot longer for to to run this routine, you know, how and and the surface isn't going to be any better. So maybe I do something like give me, you know, 150 feet, you know, each way. We'll hit OK here. And what's happening is you can see, you know, down below it's uh, it's bringing in or it's retrieving the information, um, you know, from from Google services servers. You know, down below we get a, a percent complete. Uh, when it is complete, what you will see is uh, that's going to disappear. The uh, image comes in. Uh, we do just with a quick refresh. Uh, we do send that image to the back and automatically generate that civil 3D surface for the data. 
A couple of things to know, the image is located in the same folder as your drawing file. Uh, so that's there saved if you want to you know, rename it, detach it, do, do what you want, it's, it's in that folder. Uh, as far as the surface, uh, you are able to rename this to be anything that, that you would like. Uh, a lot of questions we get are, you know, how did it pick the style? You know, what style did it use? Uh, and that's all based off of whatever the, uh, um, in your command default for generating surfaces, that's what, uh, that's what Civil 3D used um, and, and picked. But at this point, it's a surface. You can change the style to anything that you would like, and you can do, really do with this whatever, uh, whatever you, you need to. Thank you for watching, and I hope this overview was beneficial. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out by using the email address or phone number provided. Have a great day.